Sea of Thieves was once one of Microsoft's premier Xbox attractions, but it's now part of the firm's multi-platform push. Yes, Rare's pirate co-op title is headed to PlayStation 5 and had an open beta just last weekend. With that in mind, we took a look at the beta PlayStation code and also cracked open the Xbox Series versions for some more current-gen testing. So is there a difference between Sea of Thieves on PS5 and Series X? And how do the newer console versions stack up to the six-year-old Xbox One X iteration? I think the most interesting place to start here is with a look at the brand new PS5 version. This is the beta code and there may be changes when the game launches on April 30th, but it does seem quite polished at the moment. First impressions suggest a game that is very similar to its Series X counterpart. But when we look a bit closer, we do see some odd differences. Shadows look quite a bit different on PS5, with a sharper outline and more visible detail. This holds true both up close and at a distance, with faraway shadows resolving more softly on the series machine. This is definitely an odd change and falls in line with a similar tweak found in the PS5 version of Hi-Fi Rush. If we boot up the PC version at max settings, the PS5 version definitely more closely resembles the highest shadow quality option, though neither console is a perfect fit. The PS5 and PC exhibit similar looking shadow detail with slightly stronger filtering on PC. But if we step down to the legendary setting, both consoles clearly offer better and cleaner shadow rendering than the PC. I can't quite tell if this just comes down to a difference in shadow filtering or if the PS5 shadow resolution has been upgraded relative to Series X, but it is very curious for sure. I tended to prefer the PS5 shadow rendering for what it's worth, though it's not a difference I'd fixate on outside of head-to-heads. I also noticed some changes to foliage. The biggest tweak here comes down to foliage placement in general, which differs between these shots. Based on my testing, it looks like the smaller bits of ground cover are procedurally placed, with some level of randomization because they differed in each run of the tutorial area that I conducted. That means it's not a win for either machine, just a small difference that you may notice in some of these comparisons. That's not to say that there aren't some more substantial differences though. I noticed the PS5 had a consistent edge when it came to draw distances for distant foliage elements, which sometimes appeared on the PlayStation when absent from Series X. These were very minor differences that you'd need a side-by-side -side to spot, but there is a clear PlayStation advantage here for some reason, which I don't really understand at the moment. On PC, the PS5 corresponds with max settings here, with Xbox falling somewhat behind. In terms of image quality, both platforms are delivering a 4K image, it seems. Dynamic resolution is a possibility, but neither console came in below 2160p in my testing. That doesn't quite translate into the smooth image you'd expect, though, because Sea of Thieves doesn't appear to feature TAA at all. It's actually not clear if PS5 and Series X are getting any anti-aliasing treatment here at all, because edges generally look pretty much untreated throughout the game. Sea of Thieves is still presenting a crisp and detailed image, just one that has less temporal stability than you'd expect, especially for an Unreal Engine 4 game. Series S gets the expected cutbacks here. On the resolution front, we're sliding down to 1080p in the shots I tested, again without obvious anti-aliasing treatment. The game looks a lot more aliased and suffers from a lot of additional breakup here, which doesn't flatter the artwork very much. Aside from that concession, visual settings between Series X and Series S do look fairly similar. Again, there is a foliage difference between the two, though this seems to stem from run-to-run -run variants, without an obvious major divergence in foliage draw distances. The shadow maps, though, which were already pretty low res, get a further cutback and look a bit chunkier on the S, compromising close-range detail. At a distance, shadows are drawn more conservatively than Series X, with shadows cast from trees and other bits of foliage absent from the S. It's a noticeable cutback for sure. Texture quality also takes a hit, with lower res artwork all across the environment, though this is only really noticeable at close range. Series S comes in with a 36GB install versus around 90GB on PS5 and Series X, but Sea of Thieves has an art style that minimizes high frequency detail, so the cut down assets look pretty similar at a reasonable distance, with their lower resolution becoming more obvious up close. 
If we take a look at the last gen code for a minute, we can see that the current gen versions closely resemble the game on 8th gen consoles. Comparing 1X and Series X, the game renders at a native 4K on both systems and looks similar. Weirdly, in a couple of shots, I did notice better distant shadows on the 1X, though in other areas, they looked about the same. I also noticed a small difference in shadow sharpness, favoring the 1X, though this was smaller than the Series X PS5 divide. Indirect lighting did seem better on the series console though, over 1X. Again, ultimately they do look very similar. The key divide here is that the Series X targets 60 FPS, while last gen is stuck with a 30 FPS target. So what about current gen console performance? All current gen machines aim for 60 FPS by default here, but with somewhat mixed results. The Series X does mostly hit 60 here, with some substantial caveats. The game suffers from some dropped frames every so often, little 33 or 50 millisecond frame time spikes that disrupt the flow of gameplay. These pop up pretty frequently and without any apparent warning or corresponding on-screen load. I do think these may be related to network play, because solo, they rarely popped up. It's in these four-player lobbies where they tended to be at their worst. Series S is much the same, though those little frame time blips did seem rarer in my experience playing. It's a pretty decent experience on Microsoft's junior current gen console. One thing to note here though, is that Sea of Thieves doesn't feature any motion blur at all, so it's a bit less smooth than a lot of other 60fps titles. And at 30fps, it does feel a little bit choppy. Unreal Engine 4 has excellent motion blur, so it's unfortunate it didn't make the cut here. PS5 follows a similar pattern, though like the Series S, I didn't feel like I encountered those frame time blips with quite as much frequency as the X machine. It's typically a 60fps experience, just with those minor annoyances added in, but on a few occasions, the game completely locked up, falling to 0fps and requiring a game restart. And I also saw the game crash at one point. I think these may just be network teething issues associated with the open beta, so I'm not inclined to judge these too harshly just yet, but they were very disruptive and annoying. The game's network performance in general wasn't great. All consoles took a long time to find matches, even for single player outings, though I believe that this is mostly attributable to the influx of fresh players the game experienced over the weekend. And on my Series S, I couldn't connect to the game at all normally, as I suffered from the Lavender Beard server error, requiring me to sign out of all accounts but one on my system before I could play. There's one thing I haven't covered so far though, and it's the game's 120fps mode. This is active on Series X consoles and PS5, and enables you to target 120fps while taking a resolution drop to 1080p. There are a couple of other compromises too. Shadows are lower quality, and draw less often at a distance. Performance isn't that great though. It is 120fps mostly, but it suffers frequently from really nasty frame rate drops and stutters, sort of like the 60fps mode, but more obviously here. It's not a satisfying experience at all. Unfortunately, this mode slipped my mind until just after the open beta on PS5 ended, so I wasn't able to test it on my PS5 console. It is planned for the PS5 release though, and I would be surprised if performance was wildly out of step with the Series X. I'd definitely rather play with a 60fps mode though, as dropping to 1080p severely degrades image quality and performance on Series X isn't great. But the option is there for players willing to make those compromises. Sea of Thieves was a very good looking game when it launched back in 2018, and I think that mostly holds true today. Perhaps its most impressive visual element is its water. The game features roiling, finely tessellated waves, which look beautiful. Ocean waves peak with a bit of foamy froth, and light penetrates through the tips of each wave. It's not just a nice effect either. The motion of the waves rocks the player's ship back and forth, and is synchronized across players as well. Reflections are handled in an interesting, but effective way. The game doesn't appear to use screen space reflections at all, which are an Unreal Engine staple. Instead, Sea of Thieves seems to make limited use of low detail planner reflections, primarily to represent player ships and the islands. Depending on how intense the ocean waves are, these can look very convincing or not at all, with more violent seas exposing their 2D nature. 
Smaller pools of water make use of cube maps, which do suffer from some alignment issues depending on the angle, but usually look decent enough. The lack of SSR gives the ocean a lower detail, more cartoony quality, I think, than we find in games like the recent Skull and Bones. On the flip side though, we do get a lot more temporal stability by not relying on a screen space effect. The best solution, of course, would involve hardware ray tracing, which could look lovely here, though this would be an unlikely addition given the age of the game. The high seas are where this game looks best, but the on-land segments look good too. Sea of Thieves 74 islands are carefully handcrafted and look great, with a chunky but rounded low detail look. The silhouette of each island invites exploration and looks visually interesting, with carefully designed towns and fortresses scattered about as well. The on-land lighting looks pretty decent too. Screen space ambient occlusion is laid on pretty thick here, but it generally produces a pleasing result given the cartoony art style. The game also seems to have some form of global illumination in tow, which helps flesh out some of the secondary lighting characteristics of each environment. It's far from the high quality RTGI or baked lighting that we see in some more modern titles, and it does exhibit some pop in, but the lighting generally looks good considering the game's scope. I think Sea of Thieves is still a very good looking game in 2024, and it doesn't really need any big upgrades to retain its visual charms on modern hardware. Some extra touches would have been appreciated of course, and the lack of TAA does mar the image somewhat, but I don't really have any major complaints. I do think the game's current gen outings are somewhat flawed though. Sea of Thieves suffers from odd performance issues on Xbox Series and PS5 machines, which can dampen the experience and the PS5's networking issues should be sorted out before the game's April 30th release, because they were quite intrusive in my testing. Otherwise, Sea of Thieves is a pretty decent experience on current-gen consoles. The PS5 version seems fairly accomplished, with just a handful of little tweaks relative to its Series X counterpart. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. Check out the Patreon at digitalfoundry.net for exclusive and early access content and to get in touch, use social media. Thanks for watching.